it for a while. Um, and then um, until we know that everybody's here or more people are here, okay. then I'll break in and then um, uh, we'll talk about what you played and then we'll go through some slides and then start with, oh, Floyd's not here. <laughs> we'll start with Floyd when he gets here. I'll save a Nina till the, till the end. Okay, and then we'll, um, a after the interviews, I'll come back to you and we'll, um, there he is, um, I'll have you play us out for a little bit. Okay. This song is in honor of my grandmother, as it was just women's, women's history month. And now we're in April. Yeah. We continue to continue that celebration year round. So Grace, you can let everybody from the waiting room into the, um, the chat. Grandma's hands clapped in church on Sunday morning. Grandma's hands played the tambourine so well. Grandma's hands used to issue out a warning. She said, Chatty, don't you run so fast. Might fall on a piece of glass. Might be snakes there in that grass. Grandma's hand. Grandma's hands soothe the local unwed mother. Grandma's hands used to ache and swell sometimes. Grandma's hands used to lift her head and tell her, she said, Baby, Grandma understands that you really love that man. Put yourself in Jesus' hands, Grandma's hands. Pass me out some candy. Grandma's hands caught me every time I fell. Grandma's hands, yeah, they really came in handy when she said, Claudia, don't you whoop that boy. What you wanna whoop him for? He ain't dropped no apple core. I don't have grandma anymore. No, no. When I get to heaven. I see my grandma. Rest in peace, Margaret. Lost that lady during the pandemic. <laughs> Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. It's not warm when she's away. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. She's always gone too long. Anytime she goes away. Wonder this time where she's gone. Wonder if she's gonna stay. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. This house just ain't no home anytime she goes away. I know, 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 I know. Well, I better leave the young thing alone. Cause ain't no sunshine, no, when she's gone. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Only darkness every day. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. This house just ain't no home. Anytime she goes away.
know, I 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 sunshine when she's gone only darkness every day ain't no sunshine when she's gone this house ain't no home anytime she goes away anytime she goes away anytime she goes away Anytime she goes away Give it up for Chad Bishop. Thank you so much. You. <laughs> it's lovely to hear you again. Thanks for being here. Um, uh, I'm Linda Grimes. I'm your host for this, e this evening. Um, and we have uh, three, four what lovely guests. Chad Bishop, which you just heard, and he's going to come back. I um, uh, he's learned a Nina Simone song, which I don't know which one it is, but he'll play that later in the in the session. We have Floyd Strickland here in the house, um, Bruce Lemon, and the amazing Adrian Wade. So um, uh, next slide. <clears throat> just some announcements. You know, next for Thursday is first Thursday, and we uh, resume the guided art walk tours. And we will be gathering in Sirens, which is 402 West 7th Street at 530. And then at 6 o'clock, we'll be taking a tour. And we have some really special places planned. One of them is uh, going to the Annex to see a House of Bards rehearsal. You know, birthday is April month, is birthday month. Um, and they will be see a little bit of their fight choreography. Um, and then Bruce is going to talk about some other theatrical things going on this month. And we'll end up at the Artistry and the San Pedro Photographers Association. And you can uh, find the link to register on our website. Um, we also have a couple uh, calls out, a call for art. Uh, we are going to paint five more storm drains. And I'm sitting in front of one of the storm drains painted by our guest, Adrian Wade. And Adrian also has painted a number of DOT boxes. And I need to talk to you later because I think I have another box for you to paint. Um, and we're also looking for our second intern. We, um, Grace uh, Hill is here. She was our first intern and she's now our part-time employee. Um, and you must be in college or a community college to apply. Next slide. And if you need an art walk map, um, you can go to our website as well. Um, so we're gonna start with our first guest, which is um, Floyd Strickland. Floyd, are you with us? I think you're on mute. I'm here. How you guys doing? Oh, we're doing well. Welcome. It's an honor to be able to interview you. Um, uh, and um, I, I just wondered if you could start with uh, telling us a little bit about your background. Um, how did you come to be a painter? Um, are there other medium that you um, uh, also use? Um, um uh you know i've been drawing since i was a little pretty much a little kid like five six years old um so and uh, i started painting in high school um and i when i went to college i wanted to go to art school but i figured like you know i didn't really know the economy behind art at the time so i ended up going getting my bachelor's in public administration and i worked uh, in public schools for about 10 years, um, building and renovating schools throughout the country. And when I, I was in Memphis for about two years and uh, I kind of just got the itch to start drawing and painting again. And at this point, I haven't, I didn't paint or draw anything for maybe about seven years. Um, and it was just like, I think it was snow, just like it was a storm, it was snowed, I was snowed in, I just started drawing. And when I moved back to LA, I kind of promised myself that I was gonna get back into the arts. This is about 10 years ago. and. Um, I just kind of kept that promise to myself and I started painting again. I kind of just kind of delve, delve right into painting. I think the first week I was here, I went and got like some paint, some supplies, the easel. And uh, I hadn't even had a place to, uh, uh, cause I had to move back in a in hurry. So I was still staying with my mom 
and I was just in their garage painting with the dogs running around. So <laughs> it was cool, though. It was cool. So I just really got the itch, and um, I just been painting ever since. That was about ten years ago, and I just been painting ever since. So, and about you know maybe right before the pandemic, um, I was I had to, I was lucky to be able to like uh, just go full time as an artist. And it was able to quit my nine to five job. So for the last three years, I've been pretty much just full time art. I've been able to uh, get um, projects with L.A. County Arts Department. Uh, I did some work for um, like uh, a few hospitals. I did some work with Bruce as well um, uh, uh, for a couple of playbills that they did, some plays they did for the, uh, the, uh, uh, the community we grew up in. So um you know, I, I didn't have a, I want to say as a tradition, I don't, I don't, I guess no artists really have a traditional way to get into the art they love, but um, I always knew I wanted to be an artist when I was like five, six years old. I think for the most part, I would just like kind of run it a, away from what I really wanted to do because I didn't think it was realistic. But when I really kind of got into it and dove into it, you know, it's nothing I'd rather do than paint, draw and create. For the most part, I do um, work in uh, as a painter. I can sculpt too. I haven't really did it in a while though. Um, but um, for the most part, I work in oils. I do also do, I'm able to do digital work and like graphics and stuff like that as well. Um, but I love oil painting. So I, I really primarily try to stick to oil painting. Oh, would you say that your mom was most encouraging growing up? Um, was she an enabler? Oh yeah, my mom. She she always made sure that um, you know I had like supplies and stuff like that. Like I remember she would buy me these drawing books, um, and she always encouraged me when I when it came to my art. Like she always encouraged me. So I think you know growing up, my mom and my sister. I have one of my older sisters. Um, they both always encouraged me, always you know kind of pushed me to. Um, you know, to to kind of follow that that uh, that dream of being an artist, especially my older sister, and my mom always would take us to museums and stuff like that. You know, so um, yeah, I always had encouragement from my family. That's a blessing. It really is. Right. It really is. It, it, it's that, a lot of families think that that you know, art the arts are not a place to go. Yeah, um, yeah. but you, you know, we grew, I grew up in a pretty artistic house, though. Like my mom, when I was in my high middle school and high school, um, she was like, you know, had instruments around. You, you know, that's we had. She had a piano. She was singing and stuff like that. She was, uh, you know, so we we did. I did grow up in like a, a kind of an artistic house. You know what I mean? So it was it was encouraged for me. Well, that's really cool. So do you have some work that you can show us? Yeah, I do. This is, let me share my screen. One of the things I read about you is that you're, a lot of the, the children that you paint uh, um, are part of um, the artwork that you do, are your children. Yes, the, the, the paintings I'm going to share with you, I actually picked out um, the paintings that uh, are my kids. So, so every, everyone you'll see is my son and my daughter. <laughs> Let me see how I do this. Ooh. You're, while you're looking for that, you're largely self-taught, or were you? Um, did you take classes, or? I I was. Um, I had one year of art school. Well, I was an art major. Am I? Am I sharing my screen now? Here we go. Okay. Um, so here's some paintings. Yes. Why can I? Ooh, this was a way. All right. Oh, there you go. Okay. Um, so um for the most part I am self-taught. I did have a year of uh art in school. Um, but I, I didn't um I don't know, when I was in college, I, I just felt like it was an opportunity to get a career that I could make more money. So I kind of went that route and it just went full circle when I went back to art. So um, I did learn some stuff. I had a really good art teacher in high school who I, I kept in touch with for the most part. I still do. So um, I, I did. A, I always was able to lean back on her if I had any questions. 
this is one of this is my son right the image you guys seeing now this is one of the paintings that i just recently had an art basel um and um this one i think it's part of a series that i did specifically with my son and really it came about by um my son just loving hyenas like he had this infatuation with hyenas it sit and watch youtube videos of hyenas so when he was about five uh just painted uh painted of him and i'll show it to you soon um with just two big hyenas and he loved it so really a lot of my art i especially the art that i i have my kid that i uh, show my kids and um is really their personality so i'm trying to pull stuff out of their personality and really i wanted to show them like kind of in like a strong uh a strong and like powerful image of themselves you know to make sure that they have full self-confidence you know so if you see it's very this, affirming How yeah, exactly is this is here. this is the most recent one of this series he is he's i think he was nine when i took this picture so he, he um this one as well he was about nine so you know in these what i you know what i do is i usually get a big print and they all in his room so they over his bed and all in his room and he he absolutely loved these paintings so and I try to keep it you know similar so it's a hyena and he has some type of camo in it so but he absolutely loved these these paintings and I try to make it playful as well so sometimes I mix like Disney characters and and stuff like that but um these are whimsical it's wonderful yeah it's, it, exactly so and this particular one this is actually my favorite one of this series and it's my favorite one. Because the, yeah, because just the way his, his his look on his face, I just love the look on his face. And this is my favorite, absolute favorite one of this series that I painted. I mean this though, really. <laughs> yeah, he loves, he, you know, not so much anymore. It was like, you know, one of those things where he five and he, I don't know why he fell in love with hyenas, but he loved them. So this is the first one here. This one, he was five years old. Um, and this is the first one I painted. And this painting is actually about six feet tall. And it took me seven months to paint this. Wow. Yeah, because every everything is hand painted, you know, it's no print. So everything is hand painted and it took me seven months. It's all oil paint. So just to mix the paint and just to make sure, you know, yeah, it took a while. Yeah, it was really tedious, but luckily I was able to um, paint this along with like a few other things at the same time. So this paint was, I think it was my first painting that I got some type of recognition from um, just because it was so big. And when I painted this, I think um, I was kind of going for that. I wanted some people to uh, to kind of recognize my son and, you know, and and uh, so I, I just was like, let me just throw bright colors at it so it can be, you know, you're going to have to stop and look at it. So and I like the hyenas as well, but I, he loved this. <laughs> my favorite part of this painting actually is the camo pants. So I got. I love this. Oh, true. True. Yeah. Oh, this paint. This is my daughter. Yeah. I start. Um, it's funny. I was talking to my wife today and I, I didn't realize that I had I've painted my daughter so much this year that I've now have more paintings on my daughter than my son, which is like crazy to think about. But I think all this year I just been painting my daughter a lot. Um, you know, she's kind of at an age where she and she's way more artistic than my son right is right now like my daughter loves to draw and paint so she's in my studio with me all the time I got her an easel set up I got her some some watercolor set up some you know so she paints and draws all day so I, she's there so I just been painting her and, and you know and she loved this one right here because she got to play dress up and you know her mom did her hair and I bought her like a little dress because it was the like Alice in Wonderland theme of a, a, a art show I was in a few months ago so this is her favorite painting uh but for so serious kind of an old soul in, in those eyes <laughs> I, I think they it's funny because i think my kids just get tired of me sticking the camera in their face after a while so <laughs> they look they be like uh oh, enough daddy <laughs> the second kid doesn't get any pictures but <laughs> well you know i think I, since i got a good balance of like you know my son and my daughter it's kind of you know the same you know uh so um, this is one it lights uh, up when you're talking about them. Uh, yeah, I love my kids. <laughs> they they uh, just really light on my life. Really, um, this is uh, one of one of the first ones of my son early on. I think I painted this six seven years ago now, 
And I love this pain because my son was just in a backyard, just, I think I was in a garage painting at one time, at one point, and he was in a backyard, just like blowing bubbles. And I just kind of captured the, the, it was so innocent to me. And I just captured the image and I hold it, I held onto the paint. I mean, a photo for a while. Um, and one day I just was like, I'm going to just paint crazy stuff around it. Just, and he's just nonchalant about it. He's not even paying attention. He's just looking at that bubble. Also, I love it because his shoes is, I just like painting, like, you know, kind of messed up shoes. And then he got a little ashy knee over there. I thought it was funny. My wife was mad. I painted his knee ashy, but I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> She was like, why do you do that? I'm like, well, that's how it was. He was running around playing in the dirt. Like, what you want me to do? We got a thing in the black community about ashy elbows and ashy knees. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can't have no ashy elbows and ashy knees, especially around your mama. <laughs> so she uh, she was mad, but I thought it was cool, though, just because it was, like, innocent. He was playing. He was, you know, dirty. He was in a run around in the backyard. With, so I just thought it was a cool running, his, riding his bike and his skateboard. So. I thought it was a pretty good image to capture for him, you know, and I just like that part with them, like just dirty shoes. Like, I don't know why I just love that particular image. I mean, that particular part of the image. Okay, I'm on next slide. This is more recent work. Um, this is something I just recently did with my daughter. She, um, it kind of started off because she was drawing these bunnies and she was like, she was like, daddy, I'm gonna call this bunny world. So this was our, one of her drawings that she had. So I just had an idea, like, okay, I'm gonna create a world for you that's all bunnies, because she loves stuffed animals, right? So her favorite thing is she have a million stuffed animals. It's probably my fault because I buy them every time she asks. But um, I just created this image of like, and it's an ongoing series where it just just stuffed animals everywhere, and it's just everything that's like a natural elements replaced by stuffed animals. So I just thought this was a cool image of her just walking with her little stuffed animals and it's just raining bunnies. I just thought it was pretty cool. It was cute to me. So I painted it. And really, it's funny because sometimes when I paint the painting, especially of my daughter, it's kind of like she's only six, but I'm looking at her for like, like you know, to affirm that the painting is good. So she was like, yeah, dad, that's, I like that one. And if that that's what I'm looking for. So even more so than anybody else, I'm looking for my kids. It's like, oh, I love that one, daddy. So. Um, this one she absolutely loves, so I was happy to, to, to do that. And I don't know which one. You do a, a great uh, justice here. Um, that this that face is so serious. I don't, I don't want my kids to do that serious face. It's funny to me. But they do, though. It's, it's, it's like they know exactly. And I actually like the mood because it's like it's raining, you know, so it kind of goes perfectly with um, the idea of the painting. So it was it was pretty cool. And a lot of times, too, like this particular image, this is maybe about three or four different paint uh, pictures that I took of her. And I kind of combine from that. I draw a, a different figure. So that face could be something completely different. You know, I just have so many images of them. I can kind of really manipulate the drawing when I'm doing my studies for the painting to um, for it to look exactly how I want it to look. So all the paintings are not like one for one of a picture I took, basically what I'm saying. Of course, yeah. And this one, <laughs> this one is actually a, one I, I really, I really like to paint because um, I think I, I drew this um, after George Floyd was uh, murdered and, and it was during the protests and all the stuff that was going on across the world, really. And I really wanted to kind of connect like that energy of what was going on with the energy from like the 60s and the 70s and like the Black Panther uh, movement. And um, this is another picture I took of my daughter a long time ago, probably a couple years before. She's probably like four when I took this picture. And, um, you know, I was just going through my camera and I saw the picture and it just kind of struck me like the little, the, uh, the, the cat, the little panther cat on her dress. And I was like, I can do something with that. So I just kind of started drawing to the picture. And I think the, you know, I included uh, some of the bears that I include a lot of times when I paint her. But this one is significant because she can like kind of like dropping the bear. You know, it's kind of like a coming of age moment. And I saw an image of, it was a, actually a video. 
it was a little girl that was out there protesting and she was protesting and she was screaming harder than all of the adults out there. And I, and that's what I was thinking of when I painted this, when I, when I drew to this. So this one was really more specific um, to the, what was going on at the time, but I did want to connect, you know, past and present. So if you see like you have the American flag and behind it, you see a lot of the images and symbols of past protests and past um, uh, organizations that uh, was fighting for equality and stuff in the 60s and 70s. So this one right here. A mask in there too. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah, and I wanted to connect that, you know, a lot of times I would throw a mask, like an African mask, just to connect with, um, you know, the diaspora, you know, uh, so just to make sure that, you know, really that's a lot of that is for my kids too. So, you know, can teach them some African history along with, you um, create pretty images for them um and powerful images for them but this one in uh, particular i was really um i wanted to to connect those two eras and and have because the energy was similar to me and also it was like since i love history and i love to read about that time in history because i just think it was important um well i think it was important um but the fact that the we're kind of still, moment, still yes <laughs> yeah and, it, and we're still kind of going through that you know years later and 50 years later we were still in this moment that was similar to that and it was like as much as things change we still fighting for certain things so um i thought it was um i just thought this was kind of a perfect um marriage of the two two eras and i wanted to capture that in the image yeah it is very striking it is very powerful thank you uh, and this as well, this is one that I did for, uh, actually it was a black history, um, uh, show. I did a few, well, actually it was this month. Uh, I mean, last February. And, um, I thought this was pretty cool because it's just kind of a narrative painting. And what I did here is I wanted to connect, um, um, just kind of the African diaspora as well. So on the right hand, you see like the breaking of chains in Africa in the map and on the left hand you see the breaking of chains as well um the left hand at the top and both the images actually are are parts of old Aaron Douglas paintings so I wanted to connect in the same way as connecting the history of uh Harlem Renaissance art also with kind of introducing one of my favorite painters Aaron Douglas to another generation of painters and another generation of people who may not know who Aaron Douglas is so I, you know, I changed the color scheme a little bit just to make it more vibrant, look more modern. But these are also actually uh, excerpts of certain Aaron Douglas images. So, um, and the left, I believe that's uh, the original was a, a image of Harriet Tubman that Aaron Douglas did. So I embedded it into the Americas, and then I buried, embedded this other image into the uh, African continent. So just connecting the two and then um once again i gotta have my daughter in between just kind of bridging the gap and showing you know the really the the people who come from these struggles you know so um and i, I really love this image because i just love the eye her eyes in this image and i made her i painted it a little different than i normally paint i painted it more graphic uh graphical because of the flat images in the back so she does it doesn't really look like a uh, oil paint, well, not to me anyway. It looks more like something that you would see digitally done, but I wanted to, I did want to convey like, you know, a type of newness, a type of modern art in this. So that's why I did that that way. And I think this is my last slide. Yeah, this is my last slide. This is my favorite painting. I wanted to save it for last. This is my favorite one. And you can tell I had, I borrowed a lot of inspiration from the previous painting I just showed with this one. But I think to me, this is just a powerful painting. And here, once again, I, this is the first time I used uh, Aaron Douglas um, as um, kind of inspiration to this image. And here, um, you know, this image, you see Africa lit up and you see the people, you know, you see the ships coming and you see the people marching out. And then he looking up, you know, the figure on the right, but he's looking directly at my son and it's kind of looking into the future, you know, from the past. And my son is looking away, looking up as well. So I just love this. This is my probably the favorite, my favorite painting I ever painted. This is my favorite one. So I wanted to show you guys this. And um, even everything down to like his shoes. I just love everything about this painting. You this got me the first thing. Like, yeah. 
<laughs> I love the I love his shoes, you know. So I I I love this paint. This is my favorite painting that I, I made. Well, I hope to get to meet you in life someday. Uh, uh, are you? Do you have any shows coming up? I don't have any shows coming up. One just ended actually, so I don't have anything coming up right now. Unfortunately, I'm um kind of in between studio spaces. My studio old studio space uh, was closed, so I'm looking for a new space. And I'll probably have some shows in the future, though. I, well, I know I will, but not nothing coming up. Well, I want to thank you for your time. It's really an honor to be able to talk to you. And, and uh, so you just are enormously talented. And, <laughs> <Thank> it, <it's>, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not kidding. I just, th this, I'm just so honored that you're with us today. Thank no you. problem. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so will you stay with us to the end? Of course. Of course. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm going to move on to um, our next guest, which is Adrian Wade. Um, Adrian, you're on mute. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, gorgeous. Hey. How you doing? I'm doing well. Doing well. We, we go back away a few days. <laughs> we, when we first started um, uh, sending out calls for art to paint the dot boxes, those traffic signal boxes, you responded, and it's such an, uh, a privilege uh, to have some of your art on the street here in San Pedro, and I'm, I'm really grateful for you and the work that you do. Um, I'm sitting in front of a, an image of a storm drain that we painted, and as I mentioned earlier, we're going to paint, uh, we have uh, funding to do five more. Um, so hopefully you'll send us some of your ideas if you can. Um, <laughs> So growing up, were you always involved in art? How was, what was your family life like? Was, were you encouraged yes. to be an artist? Tell yes, us as that. a child, yeah, I was very creative as a child. Um, and my grandmother, a lot of people in my family were very creative and um, either sewing or making things or painting or photography. So it's in both lines, both bloodlines of my family. You grew up in and, um, Iowa? Yeah, Iowa. Iowa, Iowa, yeah. So um, that's where I grew up and that's where I was raised. And um, yeah, creativity was always a theme. And for me, creativity was always a, a way to connect with source, you know, um, or the primordial energies. So, yeah. So you're a painter and then you, there's, uh, you do some, um... I don't want to demean it by saying gardening work, but you you have a, a garden that you're involved with as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So I paint and I do a lot of nature things. And lately, a lot of things that I'm drawn to now are more in nature where I leave offerings. Like I call it my latest stuff I've been calling shanty shrines, where you're just taking like sticks and objects and using what the birds or what life would use to create some things, which I have some pictures. But yeah, I do wearable art, earth art, paintings, street art. It all just comes out in, in different ways and um, it's kind of like a channel. So depending on what's coming through, you know. I heard that um, uh, Martha Graham talks about that, that she is just the, just the vessel by which the art passes through. Yeah. So do you have some things to show us tonight? Yes, I do, I do. Let me see. Let me get some of the works together. Give me a moment. Some of your work as well, right? Mm hmm okay whoops i'm gonna highlight a whole bunch and then we'll just go through bear with me we'll take this out in post Okay. Boom. Can you guys see? Not yet. It's starting. Oh, oh. there we go. I remember right, doing yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this is um, sun and sea, and it's really about, you know, uh, the sun and the sea, which is both part of San Pedro. And I really, really love San Pedro and creating in San Pedro because so many magical things happen. Um, I want to like flip to one, hold on, one of the pieces that this, okay. So this is one of the pieces that I did, one of the very first pieces that I did in San Pedro. And uh, 
so many magical things happen in Pedro. Like people will just come up and start sharing. So this is trumpet tone. And he just came through and just started playing like the live trumpet. And so throughout the week, when I was painting this years ago, he just graced us with music. And I love painting in San Pedro because so many things happen. Like people will bring you like earth offerings or gifts, or they'll start to have like confessional moments. And it's some of the most beautiful, raw, authentic things. And so I really, really love, 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 love San Pedro. I got this on, like on video at the time when I hired yeah, a yeah. Marymount student and it's on our YouTube channel. So yeah, <laughs> I, I wonder what happened to him. I haven't seen him the last couple times I've been painting. But he was super special. So I don't know what happened to him. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Trumpet Tone. Uh, this is just another piece that I did earlier this year, Sun and Sea by the Sun Kissed Child. That's the full piece. This is a painting. Um, so a lot of my work has, it all has the same message, but it's different aspects of the same coin, right? So for me, um, life is about holism. It's about dealing with many different aspects and kind of working through the uncomfortable aspects of life so that we can get to the healed state. And um, this is just the social commentary of, you know, society. Um, can you see it, the, the rat trap? Yep, it's and the freedom. freedom. Reboot. Yeah. It's time to reboot. And this was an old, old piece, uh, but it's one of a favorite one of mine because it really speaks to the times that we're in. And, and sometimes, you know, the, the trap is the free cheese and you just got to kind of be careful with the things that we get caught up in in our society and how some of the things that we are learning are really a chance to reboot. This piece, um, I guess I can start with how this all came about. So I've always created as a, as a young child and it wasn't until my father's transition when he crossed over uh, suddenly in 2008 that I was gifted a studio in an old art store. And long story short, I was gifted this space to be able to create. And in that time, I got a lot of downloads and a lot of things. And a lot of the things that I did then are now coming to a head now. So this piece is called Less for More and it, it, there's a social commentary about just certain things and how, I don't wanna to get too far into it, but um, the housing crisis, how people are smashed by their houses and how there's a man trapped in a maze and there's a pill in there and it says cure all. And it's really interesting some of the things that we are being presented with now and the distractions and how the isolation, but it's also, if you can see the man in the maze, he can also free himself if he just, goes underneath the construct of some of the things that we're being presented with. But it really speaks to some of the times and how we are being liberated through some of the uncomfortable aspects of society, how the indoctrination and um, the systems that we have come to know may be the systems that are teaching us some things about the things that we will or will not face. And um, yeah, there's, this, is, this piece is kind of political, but there's, um, she, the name distraction. Long, on for a long time yeah, about comfort. Yeah, I won't go all the way into yeah. it. There's a lot of things about how we are distracted and our ability to be liberated from the things if we choose to look at the uncomfortable parts so that we can heal when we're ready. Um, this is an earth art project that I did and it's just painting rocks. And this is a bio swell. Uh, it was at the Los Angeles Arboretum an artist, Lee Adams, uh, created the bioswell. And then I was able to come in and paint rocks. Yeah. And it just brings life to other things that grow life and create healthy habitats for nature to restore itself. And uh, as an artist, I think it's very important to connect with life and nature and the things that connect us to things that are life. This piece is a piece um, that Issa Rae has. And it's about another message about our mind and kind of exiting the matrix and how there's gonna be things outside of us that will constantly have us moving in this cog and this wheel. And through our own liberation and going within, we can unlock the very things. And through our observations, we can unlearn, we can unplug, we can reimagine things, liberate ourselves and rise as a people um, all together because that's, some things. Uh, this is a street art box. Uh, I've done a couple. Ours, so yeah, just, that's great. Yeah, that's one of the ones that's also in San Pedro. 
again, it's just about connecting with your heart. You can see that um, this light beam is, uh, you must connect the heart to all the things to, you know, get to where you're going. So there's that. And then it also honors the divine feminine in many different ways. And you often will see hearts in my work or wombs or eyes, which are about vision and connection and connection to life. The, um, was it Sixth and Harbor? Can you go back? Oh, yeah. Okay. That was the one that was at Sixth and Harbor? Yep. Yeah. Well, it's going, it's gone somewhere else and we don't know where it went. So I'm, <laughs> I know, well, the, we don't own the boxes that uh, the, that's owned by the Department of Transportation. And so this is the second box on that same corner with you that uh -huh. went somewhere else. So um, I, I did get some funding to ask you to come back and repaint oh. it. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. That's crazy. Cause like I just, the, when I did the street ones, the sun, that was still there a couple months ago. Yeah, I think it's gone away. <laughs> wow, how times change. All right, these are shoes. Um, it's another part of the wearable art series. These are custom handmade shoes. It takes about two months to make, but each shoe is completely custom made for the client. And um, it takes time and energy, but there's also metaphysical aspects to it. So a lot of the things that we do in our life, you can kind of walk through life so a lot of um, prayers, mantras are hidden within the shoes. Here's ones that mine, but yeah, um, it's all on my website. If you wanted to know a little bit more about it, I won't go in depth, but it's, yeah, it's called Soul to Soul and it's okay. the wearable art series. Uh, this is my nature. Um, one of the nature things that I'm doing and it's all about creating environments for healing nature and ourselves and how we can reconnect because it's important. Um, so that's just one of the gardens that I've done. I'll just flip through. This is a um, place in Iowa. I'm opening up an art and nature preserve and have really been working for a very, very long time to restore life and to uh, get funding so that if people want to know how to return to the land, it's possible. And so year after year, I go back and I sell fun. This is a piece that I made. It's kind of like a bird's nest, but at some point you can also grow food out of it. Um, but it's just taking fallen sticks, trees, things that are found in nature and, you know, working with it to make life, life. So yeah, so there's lots of rich soil here in, in the middle that you can meditate and earth with and also grow food. So. I threw out seeds, we'll get to see what happens from it. Uh, these are some of the works that I've done that are social commentary to society, some of the shadow aspects that some of us will have to face in order to um, move through where we wanna go. So, you know, just facing some of the uncomfortable aspects so that we can all live in harmony, it's possible. Um, here's another piece that's about nature, earth, love, connection. And yeah, there's plants there for the bees and natives. This is a piece that I did, it's called We Are Life, I Am, We Are One. And I painted that piece, it was an offering to the people of Pedro um, five years ago. And then I recently went back and redid it because the sun had faded it. And so it was just a way to re revamp it and repaint. And so I just finished that last year. It was really on fun. grand uh, yeah you know where the uh, everything's so visual for me like where i know it's out in my head but then i can't i think it's fourth and grand where the um convenience store is it's not like a gas station but there's like the convenience store on the corner i think it's fourth it's fourth and something but there's like a convenience store and then that's like right next to it so i think it's fourth and grand and then this is yeah another one just another lovely lady who came and chatted with me throughout the painting process. This is a um, another earth art structure that I created and I call it the mushroom manger, but it's basically a way to restore life. So some of the soil has been um, poisoned through our practices and so not ours, but you know, just the stuff that they spray in the air and a whole bunch of other things. So um, by using mushrooms, it helps to pull out some of the toxins in the soil and that was just a creation that I did using earth art. 
This is another piece dedicated, it's Harriet Tubman, but I really like the phrase because I feel like it applies now as well as then, but you know, you could liberate many people if people are willing to look at and um, understand where we really are within the construct of society and the matrix. Around. And it, it applies not just to people of color, but of all, exactly. all of humanity, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> we'll get into that here. Um, this is another earth art structure. I call it the squirrel jungle gym. Um, it's, it's an ode to um, old structures that we had. Uh, many of us are organic to this land. Many of us grew up in the Americas before America was America. And um, so this is just an ode to that. And it's really funny because I've had neighbors or people in the neighborhood, they'll like send me pictures and there's like squirrels or birds. And so it really invites light to come back. This piece is completely used with um, sticks and then like uh, wood that was torn from a storm um, was used to tie up the, the structure. So it's completely freestanding and is tied with uh, fibers from the trees. And a storm came through years ago, like two years ago, 2019. And um, a lot of the trees fell over. So we were able to repurpose and reuse many of those things to create new structures. This is a bridge that I built in the middle of the forest. So yeah, just fun ways to make earth offerings. Uh, this is another art piece that I did made out of earth art. And uh, it's down a huge ravine. And instead of all of the soil falling down the hill, it's just an old indigenous way of um, being able to create ways to slow water when it rains, but also to create fun little ways for things to kind of um, slow. It's like a retaining wall made out of sticks. And I would take like stone and, you know, you just create all down the land. But it's, it's pretty big, but it, I don't know if you can see the scale of it with that but um yeah and here is a gate that i painted for the art nature preserve yeah i have a couple of them and i think that's it i want to show you guys more but yeah i don't know that's okay i really appreciate your being here and it's always interesting to find out what you're up to your day job yeah. is a sound engineer right yeah, so I do sound um, for a lot of different shows. Uh, there was The Godfather for the Clarence Savant documentary. I worked on Tina Turner, worked on um, the mental health documentary series that Oprah did and released last year, When They See Us, or I can't remember the title. But um, yeah, so I've worked on a lot of different things in Hollywood and in television. And that's also informed my lifestyle as well because you get to be around many different walks of life and you get to see many different things. And in that journey, it's allowed me to get more aligned with what balance means for me and what happiness and joy means. And it's not always the paper because I've been around some of the most wealthiest people and you get to see different flips of the coin. So I'm really grateful to have um, the opportunity to see so many walks of life and hear so many stories before they're edited and presented to the world because it really helps you to remain open and neutral to many things that we may be told so well, that you I can see in a different you. way yeah so and i think you. that the last two years gave us a chance to do that kind of some of us a chance to reset uh, yeah. so i want to thank you for being here i'm, I'm, I'm looking forward thank to see you. you in seeing you in life Yes. And I really appreciate you and the joyfulness of your work. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I have to go now. I'm so glad I got to at least see some of this. I'm so sorry I have to leave. Thank you all. This is awesome. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing, Linda, putting these marvelous talents. It's so stimulating. You guys are wonderful. You are hey, Chad. See you later, too. <laughs> And we found out during rehearsal that Bruce and Floyd knew each other in another life. Another life, this life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a previous incarnation of a younger life. Yes, yes. So how are you? Oh, so I mean, I'm up. I'm great. Oh, yes, you're up. <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I want to introduce you to Bruce Lemon. Um, so I'm gonna ask the question I asked everybody else. 
How did you know that when you were that you were an artist? Uh, I knew I was an artist when I wasn't good at anything else. Um, uh, <laughs> I I mean like chores or anything. I couldn't do. My dad used to always say like, "You can't do simple stuff. You just you just incapable of doing simple things." And uh, and that is carried on. So I chose a life in the arts, um, which is the definition of not a simple choice. <laughs> um, and uh, and it it always it's always been what has what has sparked me and, and kept me uh, uh, alive and occupied and um, and dreaming. Yeah. So what are you doing now? Uh, now I do, I do, uh, a little bit of everything. Um, I, I'm a, I'm an, I'm a host, uh, I'm an actor. Well, no, let me start from the beginning. I'm a storyteller, uh, in any form that I can grasp. And I take really honest swings at forms that I can't grasp yet. Um, uh, so, uh, in storytelling, I, um, I'm an actor, I'm a director, I'm a writer, uh, I'm a host, I'm a collaborator, um, I direct theater, I direct opera, I act in film, I act on stage, um, I create solo shows, uh, I work in large-scale productions with way too many people, um, which is all about collaboration. Uh, I'm uh, now a podcaster as well. Um, uh, I just, uh, I do I do all the things that I, that I possibly can to create. I write poetry. Um, and uh, the way and, that we met was that was through John Cohn at KPCC. You in the before times, you had a show called Unheard L.A. And we're uh, hoping that that comes back soon. Can you talk about that? And then um, you can show us the slides that you made. Uh, yes, I can. Yes, I can. And um, uh, so Unheard L.A. was actually the first slide I was going to show you. Um, so I could probably bring those up. But Unheard L.A., let me actually do that for you. Unheard L.A., not Jordan has Illumination. Let me switch that real quick. Unheard LA, Unheard LA. Uh, it's a live storytelling series um, from KPCC in person. Uh, in the before times, before everything shut down, we would do these shows in theaters with about 500 uh, or more people. Uh, and we would invite um, people to submit online uh, stories, people from all over Southern California. It's real people amplified is our, is our tagline and our mission and what we do. So many people that come tell stories at Unheard LA are, are not professional storytellers. Some of them miss their very first time uh, telling telling their story uh, in in front of an audience, the very first time doing public speaking. Uh, and we coach them through the process a bit uh, and then uh, invite them to come stand in front of a few hundred people uh, while their story is also streamed live on our on the on KPCC's Facebook site uh, and um, and then broadcast on air. Uh, so it's all about bringing people into, uh, sort of into the spotlight uh, and into the world of, of storytelling and expressing themselves uh, to the masses, uh, which really uh, informs everything else I do because I believe that we are all storytellers. It's factually, it's what we do every single day when you tell. You know your best friend about uh, this thing that happened at work, or you tell your 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 spouse or your love about this you know this idea you had or anything like that is storytelling at its core. Um, and uh, we if we if we change the setting and the reasoning and uh, and amplify it a little bit, uh, all of a sudden it's a show. Um, and uh, I know it's it takes more than that, but if you really break it down to how how simple it is. I think it, I think it demystifies it and invites people into the process so they can create whatever they want to create. Uh, so that is Unheard LA. Uh, hopefully we, we'll be back uh, with um, our live events soon enough. During the pandemic, we made a pivot to some online uh, storytelling that was um, taking some of the stories that were told on Unheard LA stage and viewing them through a different lens, highlighting the stories um, that showed how identity and race uh, 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 kind of shapes the way you move through the world and move through L.A. at this point. So our, our goal there with our Deeper Listen series was to hopefully uh, at that time, it was right after right after the lockdown, right after uh, George, Floyd, George Floyd was murdered, that, uh, that people were hopefully listening differently and they can hear in these stories they already heard what they may have missed before. 
Um, and that that was our hope with that series. And and we're gonna we're gonna keep telling stories and keep bringing into the fold, bring folks in. So you, uh, in the, in the vein of I might be jumping ahead, but in the vein of um, storytelling, you are an artistic director with Cornerstone Theater. Uh, I am the associate artistic director at Cornerstone Theater Company. Um, uh, I also am the co-artistic director at Watts Village Theater Company. So there's just two companies that I wear hats on in leadership. Uh, and uh, Cornerstone, Cornerstone, now we can go into Cornerstone. Cornerstone makes plays with and about communities. Um, and this um, actually is uh, the artwork from a show that we did uh, in Watts, which is where I'm from and where Floyd is from. Uh, and it's uh, a Jordan as Illumination, written and directed by Nancy Keystone. Uh, and the artwork you see here was done by Floyd Strickland. And um, on this project, I served as the, as the um, what was my title? Creative producer. I was the creative producer on this show, uh, working in partnership with the director to, uh, to bring, the, bring her vision and the vision of the community uh, to life on, on, on what we did. What I was actually doing most of the time uh, on this show looked more like this. That, that's the art. That is that is actually fun time. You know, uh, we were we're we're in the Jordan Downs, uh, and we're producing this big spectacle of a show, uh, feet away from from where these kids live and play, and uh, and the the big thing was doing it right in front of them, so they can see it happen, and they can see who's doing it, and hopefully see themselves. Uh, in the mix, a couple, uh, a couple of these kids wanted to be. They wanted to. They were like, "Can we? Can we MC?" I was like, "Can we? Can we do? Can we do like a dance?" I was like, "Yes, whatever you want to do, we will find a way to bring you into this kid." Because uh, that's what it's really all about is uh, is bringing people into the storytelling, bringing people in to um, to be heard and uh, and do something creative. You know, to to take you out of whatever. Like it, we, our work kind of. Uh, will d disrupt the normal flow of your of your everyday life. Um, but for that, you know, uh, a, a couple like month or, or so where you're working with us to uh, to 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 tell a story uh, on a stage and do things you haven't done before uh, changes people. It changes the professionals that come in uh, and work with a community for the first time. It changes the community who comes in and does something brand new for the first time. And it's all about uh, embracing how how much magic we all have inside us all to to tell stories and bring life and and just be fantastic people. Uh, Cornerstone is currently uh, in San Pedro, working on a show right now. Um, this is uh, the this is uh, Soccer is Love, uh, El Amor is Football. It's a short play. It's about short about twenty twenty about twenty five minutes. Uh, and we're going to do a reading of this play this Saturday, actually, um, at in Retro San Pedro at the uh, the uh, the baseball diamond, which is also a soccer field. Um, and we're going to uh, do a reading of this play that was written through our story circle process, which is all about meeting people uh, and uh, inviting them to tell us uh, tell us stories about uh, about your about your life or about the specific uh inquiry that we are entering in to tell a story about and what we found um, in sorry this to interrupt, first phase, sorry to interrupt but we put this in our e-news and it's three o'clock on saturday right yes yes three o'clock yeah. on saturday and uh and just to backtrack um you uh, were working with the one san pedro people because rancho san pedro is slated to be redeveloped so this work of collecting stories and teaching storytelling is really vital to the residents of all of San Pedro, and so I want to commend you for taking this on. Thank you, thank you, and uh, and folks, uh, this story is ever evolving. This is the first phase of our uh, engagement here in San Pedro, uh, culminating in this in this short play. Um, but we're working towards a large, fully produced stage, lights, costumes rehearsal process uh, production that will in, that will that we're, that we're working to bring in all of San Pedro that is being connected to through the one San Pedro uh, uh, project uh, so that is that's coming um, uh, part of what we're doing with this first uh, first pre presentation with this short with this short play is after the play we're gonna 
walk the audience through a couple of our exercises that we use to get people talking and generate stories. Uh, we have a, a mural station that uh, people can create art based off some prompts to add to a community mur mural that we're making uh, in Rancho San Pedro. We're also having a, a story booth uh, where you can uh, step into the booth and uh, based off one of the prompts, tell a story that we'd record um, that we can add to the bank so we can continue to uh, dig into these stories and create uh, a big, beautiful theater project for all of San Pedro to participate in and enjoy and be a part of. Uh, so come through and be a part of that. Uh, and more in the theater realm, I'm a, I'm a freelance director. Uh, I, I, I'm working uh, kind of all over the place. Uh, over the past, over this summer, over this, well, not over the summer, this early, earlier in 2021, uh, I got to direct um, this play here, 365 Days, 365 Plays by Susan Laurie Parks. Um, and this was in Queens College in New York City. And I directed it from my home here in Los Angeles, sitting in this very chair, um, working with uh, the students there. And we created a, a, a big digital theater piece. Uh, this play in particular, um, it's a volume of 365 plays. And out of that, we selected about 15 of them that we brought to life uh, using uh, digital theater magic with uh, programs that I don't know how to use, but all of the work that we do in the theater is collaborative. So uh, a lot of my art is uh, is made with a, a ton of super important people that this work would not exist without. Uh, and we had a, a great group of about 11 students that uh, even though they were overwhelmed and, uh, and in isolation, still wanted to create. And my task was to keep these artists alive uh, and working. Uh, so we made uh, this play uh, with Queens College. Um, also, I just recently got to do a, a real dream project. There's a play called uh, She Kills Monsters that I was a part of the original cast of uh, about 10 years ago. And I got the opportunity to direct uh, a production of She Kills Monsters uh, last year and uh over at, over at ucla and what you see here this picture this is our set uh the the play is ultimately about grief um and it's about um a, a woman uh named uh, agnes who finds she's she's getting ready to move out of her of her family home and uh she discovers uh, a module a DD module that her little sister made um, her family all died in a car crash and she plays this D, &D game uh, to connect with her sister. So it's really in the belly of the beast of grief. Like you're in that in that, in that that gaping maw of grief. So uh, what we did was we turned the proscenium into a monster. Uh, the curtains are the teeth of the monster. Uh, we had furniture on stage that was the bottom row of teeth of the monster. And those eyes you see are projected on the screen on uh, onto, the, onto, those, um, onto this round surface that we would switch out for a map or we'd have effects where like an arrow was flying. This is a play that involved uh, uh, dragons and um, and sword fighting and lots and lots and lots of combat. I mean, the show is it, it is it is basically a an action sitcom. Um, so I kind of modeled it after after uh, an action based sitcom from the '90s inside the mouth of a monster, uh, and that's what we did. Uh, right now, you see uh, Agnes in the middle. She's fighting Tiamat, which is a five-headed dragon. Uh, so using puppetry um, and smoke and lights, we created this atmosphere. There's some really cool shots of this that I want to show you here. Um, we flooded the space with, with smoke for this really um, uh, fun jaunt through, uh, through a fantasy world um, that was also at the same time Ohio in 1995 somehow uh, here's one more shot here so you can see some of the puppets that we used uh, in uh, running from our, our our band of adventurers who uh, are on a, a mission to save the great uh, the soul of Athens um, which is uh, this is a play that you should really check out and read um, I believe actually it 
the the marquee at the at the Warner Grand had Chico's monsters on it for about a year during the pandemic. I'm not sure if you noticed that if you were walking around town. I didn't um, know what it was. Yeah, wasn't it? Uh, and that 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 really struck my heart because I was like, oh, that's the show I was in. I was a part of creating that show a decade ago. That's amazing. And then I got the opportunity to direct it, and I'm just excited about that. Uh, I don't and I'm. Moving on to the, the, more of the directing realm, I don't just direct theater. I started directing opera recently, uh, beginning with uh, The Anonymous Lover. The Anonymous Lover, which we did at the for the LA Opera uh, to launch their um, their streaming service at the top of the pandemic. Uh, the Anonymous Lover uh, is a, a play written by uh, uh, Joseph Boulogne, uh, Chevalier de Saint George. He is a French, um, uh, a, a black French. Uh, composer that was lost to history um, largely due to to slavery actually uh, um, and it's and it, during his time uh, Napoleon reinstated slavery in the French Isles where he was from uh, so that's that's the time period uh, that this was uh, this was originally written in and it was largely lost to uh, to history because of that um, but the LA Opera wanted to produce it so uh, I worked with a dramaturg to um, adapt the um, the libretto, uh, not the libretto, but adapt the dialogues between the libretto, uh, and uh, produce um, the anonymous lever, which we did during COVID, at the height of COVID, before we had vaccines, uh, and we went to tech the week of the election. So it was it was a really wild time to be uh, producing uh, any kind of live event and uh, opera. Singing, first of all, was the one thing that we, everyone was very, very strongly warned against doing because uh, the stream uh, from the opera singers is it stretches far and wide, and uh, so it's it's not something that you can do without without care. Uh, the way we staged it was we had the opera singers uh, in the balconies of the theater at the Coburn School, and um, we filmed them from across from across the from across the balcony and um, try to make it so that everybody was in the same place while keeping everyone safe. Uh, and um, the, the music was all recorded uh, in a separate hall and then like stitched together. It really took a gargantuan team to really pull this together. Um, and we worked with uh, a, a group of, of, of young opera singers that are tremendous talents that I really uh, hope you get to see and take in uh, as they continue to to grow. Um, Hannah Kim did the projections and Pablo Santiago did our lights. And you can see it all coming together in this beautiful image here. It was largely inspired by um, by uh, the uh, work of uh, uh, Kara Walker. And we, um, yeah, everything was, was kind of brought together through uh, long sessions, having conversations, talking about our our inspirations and trying to figure out what we could do uh, when we can't get close to each other and, uh, and can't share space. Um, and this is another one of the photos. As you can see here, the dancers here are wearing masks um, because we had to. The singers that are not wearing masks, this was done during a portion of the so show where there was no singing and they are 10 feet away from each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had uh, to deal with a lot of COVID compliance to make sure that happened and it was done safely. So um, as you can see, I'm kind of all over the place with the art that I do. I'm uh, working on a new opera with the LA Opera uh, uh, called The Song of Los Angeles that's going to be at Kenneth Hahn Park in um, June 2023. Uh, it's going to be three uh, small chamber operas that uh, were being written by Imani Tolliver. And um, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a good time. So make sure you... Uh, check your uh put on your calendar in june 2023 to, to come to the park and see and see an opera we'll help you um know, uh, the details when we get closer yes yes we certainly will certainly will uh let's switch rails a little bit i'm also an actor i'm also an actor uh this is a film called hallelujah that premiered this year at the sundance film festival um uh which you may have heard of uh it's about uh these it's, it's centered around this this family these two brothers who are tasked with uh, taking uh, custody and care of their niece and nephew after a tragedy and they lose their parents. Um, it's about 14 minutes long and it takes you on a ride. It's a, it's a tromedy. Um, so it's, uh, it's funny, um, but it is, is based around the, the, the trauma 
uh, that um, that people go through, that this these particular people are going through. Um, uh, distribution uh, should probably happen around August, but it's still in the festival scene. Uh, so we premiered at Sundance, then went to the Toronto Black Film Festival. Next up is the Martha's Vineyard Film Festival. Uh, and uh, hopefully you can catch it on like HBO or something soon enough. Uh, so if oh. you want to see me act on film, uh, that's where to that's where to do it. Um, there's some pretty good. The second uh, figure here um, next to the guy with the red pants, right? Yes, yes, yes. That is that is me uh, holding holding the hand of the young lady there, uh, Mariah. And that that little girl, Mariah Farms, is uh, she's uh, an expert skateboarder. <laughs> um, but on, on the long board, like the board that's longer than her, even uh, just throwing out some really cool facts about the awesome people that worked on this set. Um, in addition to uh, directing and hosting and acting and all that, um, I also uh, do a little poetry. Um, uh, this is the uh, Mark Ridley Thomas um, Behavioral Health Center. And uh, what you see along the facade of this building are three pillars that uh, are, it's all made of steel and it's uh, it, it's lit up at night. Uh, it's done by uh, Cliff Garden Studio and uh, the poem on the that is fashioned after the the river that ran through Willowbrook, um, which is the community where it is, uh, it was written by myself along with uh, Dr. Cynthia Gonzalez, and it's in uh, English, Spanish, and Tongva, uh, meant to honor the uh, the original um, uh, caretakers of this land, uh, of this unceded territory, the Gabrielingo Tongva peoples. Um, and uh, the 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 two community two uh, communities that make up this community uh, as it exists today um, in uh, in Willowbrook and Watts and really all over LA. Uh, so uh, if you get a chance to f drive by uh, the Behavioral Health Center in Willowbrook uh, at night, you can see it all lit up in all its glory uh, and try your best to read it. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm. I'm pretty excited about it because it's going to be there for like generations. Uh, <laughs> and that's really cool. Floyd also has artwork uh, at this space as as well. So uh, you can really go on a tour uh, of some really beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work made by uh, the people in this very room uh, at that uh, behavioral health center, um, which hopefully also brings um, a lot of uh, a lot of joy to people who go and need some help and get that help and then go on to to do life uh in the best way they possibly can uh so you so are a bringer of joy and it's amazing to me um creative people how all of you are so multi-talented and i really appreciate your being here with us tonight and i look forward to seeing you on saturday so thank you for your time here it was um glorious to be able to talk to you thank you Thank you, and thanks for taking in all the stuff we do. Is it okay if I drop a link to our um, to this event in the oh, chat? Please, please. Great, I'm gonna drop that in the chat, so you can come join us this Thank weekend. Thank you. For the first yeah, have my, we have our tickets, and I'll see you on Saturday. Fantastic, fantastic. So I'm gonna finish up. Um, um, I challenge Chad to come and learn a Nina Simone song. So we're gonna finish up with that uh, song, or I'm not sure what you're gonna do, but. Um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I don't want these slides. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm going to ask Chad to um, uh, play us out. You're on mute, Chad. There right. you go. Thanks a lot. Can you guys hear me? We can. All right. Um, first of all, Linda, thank you for for putting this thing together and inviting me to come here. I'm, I'm inspired by these artists, man. This is beautiful. Um, Floyd, I'm really inspired by the way you utilize your children and, and the things around you to um, in your artwork. Um, Adrian, I've seen your work on the streets of San Pedro as I used to stroll up and down 6th and 4th and all those different places. Uh, and Bruce, man, I um, really love the work you're doing and looking forward to hearing more about, um, learning more about Unheard LA. So my challenge today was to learn a, a Nina Simone song. So 
I learned this song a little bit on the piano, but unfortunately, the lighting in the piano room uh, didn't work so well. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to do it a cappella. I wish I knew how it would feel to be free. I wish I could break all the chains holding me. I wish I could say all the things that I should say. Say them loud, say them clear, for the whole round world to hear. I wish I could share all the love that's in my heart. Remove all the bars that keep us apart. I wish you could know what it means to be me. Then you see and agree that every man should be free. Oh, I wish I could give all I'm longing to give. I wish I could live like I'm longing to live. I wish I could do all the things that I could do, though I'm way overdue, I'd be starting anew. Well, I wish I could be like a bird in the sky. How sweet it would be if I found I could fly. I'd soar up to the sun and look down on the sea. Cause I'd sing, cause I know how it feels to be free. Nina Simone. That was glorious. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for indulging me. Uh, yeah, I wanted to, um, as I said, play it on the piano in that little bit. But the oh, I think it was more powerful this way. Your voice is gorgeous. Thank you so much. Thank you all. I really appreciate it. So, I want to thank all of our guests, Bruce Lemon, Floyd Strickland, Chad uh, Bishop, and Adrian Wade for being with us tonight. And um, next slide. Um, just wanted to uh, remind you that um, if you feel so inclined to donate to the Arts District, you can go to our website. Uh, uh, right now we have a campaign going to uh, uh, fix up the murals or, uh, uh, and then tackle the, graf uh, the graffiti that sometimes happens. Next slide. And I want to thank all of you again, Chad Bishop, Adrian Wade, Floyd Strickland, Larson Gormley, Bruce A. Lemon, Larson is our sound engineer, Linnell Harrison who takes all of these uh, videos that we record and puts it up on our YouTube channel. Grace Hill, our lovely um, uh, um, uh, part-time employee. Uh, Cheryl Holtzman, who helps with the behind the scenes and the board of the San Pedro Waterfront Arts District. Next slide. And uh, we do this in memory of Pat Carroll, who was a, a founding board member and passed away a couple years ago. She did the guided art walk tours for 10 years, and it was a great way to take people by the hand and show them art. And so we, um, this is a tribute to her menu, memory. Last slide. And we'll be doing this again in May. Um, I haven't set a date yet, but we have filmed. Um, I thought a lot about the effect that Sister Corita Kent had on women's leadership in San Pedro. And so we filmed some interviews with uh, four of the women that were that went to Immaculate Heart when Sister Corita was there. And one other woman like me, Connie McCosker, who was very much influenced by that kind of leadership. So pay attention to our website or um, sign up for our e-news and um, we'll let you know when we're going to do the one in May. So thank you all for being here. It's really important to us to have an audience and to the artists and we'll see you in May. Thanks again. Thank you.